Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 12 beta 10 to developers. Also, they released public beta 8 as well, and this was a bit of a surprise and came in at a very small 68.7 megabytes on my iPhone 10. It came in around 40 megabytes on my iPad Pro, and a lot of people were thinking this was the gold master, but Based on that size, I'm sure it's not the gold master yet. Usually it's a couple gigabytes when we have the final version because it's a full system, kind of a system refresh or wipe that goes on in the background. Let's take a look at the build number. The build is 16A5364A, and this particular build doesn't have anything spectacular in it, but I'm assuming it's security updates or some minor bug fixes. Now, I did put it on the iPhone 5S like many of you requested, so I have it on the 5S, the SE, the 7 Plus, and the iPad Pro 12.9 first gen. I primarily use it on my iPhone 10 and the iPad Pro, but I've been using it on all of these just to see how speed is. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But according to the notes, there were zero resolved issues and there's 16 known issues. Most of those are developer issues and we'll talk about that in a moment. But a lot of you have been asking me about this shortcuts app and the shortcuts app is just a replacement for the workflow app so workflow here you can get it for free right now apple bought that and they're not going to directly integrate it into the os i think what they're going to do instead is make it available once ios 12 is out and then you can go to the app store and download it so if you want to try it get the workflow app build your workflows and then when you open shortcuts it already does this it pulls them right in and you've got all the same thing so play around with it there and give it a try now as far as speed on everything so far it feels good now it does take a few days to know for sure but if we take a look at this device for example speed is really pretty good when you go into different things like music we'll scroll a little bit scrolling seems fast for such an old device so a 5s here uh, it's pretty good here let's see how the camera is we'll open that wherever it is here go here open the camera it takes a second but it works and you'll see it's open we can take a photo so everything's okay we'll compare speed with ios 11 later when that comes out when ios 12 comes out to the public rather now on the ipad i've had no issues with ios 12 beta 9 and so far it seems okay here but let's talk about battery for a moment battery on ios 12 beta 9 was good for me i'm at 100 percent battery health on my iPhone 10. These devices vary depending on what they are. You can't see it on the 5S, otherwise I'd take a look, but it's just not there. It's not an option. If you go to settings and you go to battery, you'll see the options just not even there. So overall though, I think it's pretty good, but as far as the storage used, I want to talk about that for a moment. If we go into my photos, I took a screenshot earlier. You'll see overall I had 58.5 gigabytes of 64 gigabytes used and system was taking up 41.06 gigabytes. If we take a look at what it's actually using now, we'll go back here to iPhone storage. You'll see I'm using a little bit less storage and if we go to system, we're about 10 gigabytes less. So 30.6 is being used by system. Now we're not sure what's going on in the background all the time because the file system is doing different things and keeping backups of things just to make sure you don't lose anything. But APFS is doing work and usually that's taking place within that storage. So we did gain some storage, at least I did. And that part seems good. Now, as far as anything new, I haven't found anything new other than everything seems to be nice and fast. And there's a few different bugs that still remain. Here's some of them. Siri shortcuts when locked may not work. Siri suggestions may not work. Wi-Fi calling on T-Mobile may not work, although I haven't had an issue with that. Also, screen time statistics may be off. So if you're using screen time, screen time is one of the new features. If you're using that, your statistics might be off a little bit. And also traffic data within maps might not be working properly still. So all of those things still need to be resolved or maybe Apple just didn't update their notes. It's hard to say at this point. Now, finally, let's take a look at the Geekbench on the iPhone 10. I ran the Geekbench earlier, but let's run it again since I, it's been a little while and it should improve. Now, while we're waiting for that Geekbench to finish, let's take a look at Fortnite since I know a lot of you want to see that. If we go to Fortnite, I'll hit play. You'll see it was already open. It's running fine here. And also on the SE, I've got Minecraft running. So it, res it just resumed. We'll hit resume and you'll see it's working just fine no issues there so it's working well on the se and then fortnite on the iphone 7 plus should be working just fine we'll let that load as well and you'll see we're still running our geekbench here so fortnite didn't fully load for some reason i'll reload it but you'll see right here the geekbench scores 
Now that this is finished, we've got 4,226 for single core, 10,568 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, you'll see these three were run today, but based on the previous beta, we're right about the same. We're one off of the multi-core and about four off of the single core. So no issues there. Whatever they fixed uh, is about the same as far as processor speed. Let's let this load. We'll take a look at that and then we'll wrap things up. So Fortnite seems to be working okay. Everything's nice and fast and we can play that. So that's good on the iPhone 7 Plus. No problems there. And then as far as the final release, we should see the final release probably within a couple weeks. So hopefully there'll be an Apple event somewhere in these dates and we'll see it then. And that's pretty much it. We've got a few more bugs, a few little things here and there. And hopefully they resolve those before iOS 12 comes out and we'll get group FaceTime later on. Let me know if you find anything else, though, in the comments below. And also, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description, as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.